Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the course evaluation of textile material. In last section, we have started the measurement of characteristics of textile material. We have started with the one of the most important characteristics of staple fiber that is the length. There we have discussed various length related parameters and and their uniform uniformity related parameters and also we have discussed various methods of measurements. And now we will discuss another important parameter of textile material, textile fiber. This characteristics is that it is fiber fineness. So, in most of the material the fineness like uh, cylindrical material the fineness can be easily expressed by diameter. So, so in that case so fiber for fiber also it should be actually the diameter should be the one of the parameters we should be able to measure the diameter. So, fineness means that how small or large the diameter of a fiber is. So, we would like to know the finer or coarser whether the fiber is fine or coarse. So, we would like to know by measuring the fineness. By fineness we know that it is a basically cross sectional shape. If a fiber is fine the cross sectional area should be less, but most of the textile material textile fiber the main problem is that that it is a basically it is not uniform. Now, the by knowing the fiber fineness, so we would like to know the various actually process related parameters. So, if a given count is spun from a fine or coarse fiber. So, more uniformity we will get higher uniformity and stronger yarn we will get from the finer fiber. Because in case of finer fiber, so for same yarn linear density if we yes use uh, finer fiber that means the number of fibers in the cross section will be high. So, higher number of fiber in the cross section will result the higher uniformity and also the higher number of fiber will have more and more contact points higher contact points that will result for the same fiber strength. Fiber strength is uh, keeping same so fiber uh, tenacity keep, keeping same but if we use fibers with smaller diameter that will result higher contact area and will have stronger yarn. Like we can see here the two yarns this is one yarn the two yarns are there yarn A and yarn B. So, the yarn count of the two yarns are exactly same, but yarn A we are preparing we are making the yarn A by using coarser fiber. So, number of fibers in the cross section will be less, but yarn B we are using finer fiber. So, this is the number of fiber. So, the number of fibers will be very high. So, if we use the smaller fibers finer fiber with smaller diameter. So, here in yarn B as the number of fibers are more. So, the uniformity of yarn is actually uh, will be very high 
that means evenness the C V percent will be low because it is a inversely proportional to the number of fiber as the number of fiber increases the C V will reduce. Okay. Also if we see if we compare yarn A and yarn B as the number of fibers are more. So, higher contact area contact area between fiber to fibers are there. So, and in yarn A as it is coarser fibers are there. So, contact area between fiber fiber to fiber contact area will be much less than in case of B. So, the between fiber contact area if it increases that means, its frictional contact will increase. So, as we know the staple fiber yarn strength comes from only the friction. So, if the this A and B are from same staple fiber of different diameter fibers. So, yarn A as it has got less contact area for keeping all other parameters same the yarn A will result lower strength. So, this yarn B will have higher strength and lower irregularity that is higher uniformity will be there. So, it is obvious that now so that uh, with the by using finer fiber we can achieve the stronger yarn and uniform yarn. So, it is very important to know the diameter of fiber. Okay. Finer fiber can be spun to finer yarn count okay, than coarser fiber because for five for yarn to be manufactured to be actually uh, produced we need minimum number of fibers in the cross section. So, if a finer yarn we want to produce in that case we have to use finer fiber like again we can come here you can see this is yarn we have to this is a certain count of yarn. Okay. Suppose, this is uh, yarn is say English count say tens English count we are using one particular fiber. Okay. So, that is working here because number of fibers are uh, required fibers are there it is a coarser count. Okay. Now, suppose we want to produce a finer count say 60s count 60 any 60s count yarn we want to produce and the yarn is yarn diameter is this one. Now, here if we want to use the same fiber. So, number of fiber will be very less. So, yarn we cannot form yarn if at all the yarn is formed the yarn will be highly irregular and strength will be very less. So, to produce finer yarn, so if we want to produce finer yarn, then we have to use the very fine fiber. So, by using finer fiber, we can produce finer yarn and getting very good quality. So, fi a finer yarn can be produced from finer fiber. The fineness affects the now we will see the what are the what is the importance of fineness of fiber and what are its effect effect on dif different characteristics. So, it affects various characteristics first is that it affect the stiffness handle and drape of fabric. Okay. So, the bending rigidity of fiber increases with the diameter. Okay. As the fiber diameter increases the its bending rigidity will increase. So, uh, the bending rigidity of fabric or its stiffness will also increase and it affects the drape characteristics. So, to have very soft fabric very soft handle highly drapeable fabric we must use a finer fiber. Thus, for a yarn of given count, the flexibility increases as the fiber diameter decreases. So, if we use the coarser fiber, the 
stiffness of the yarn will increase. Now, coming to the torsional rigidity. So, torsional rigidity increases with the increase in fiber diameter. Okay. The resistance to twist with the increase with the increase is increase in the diameter of fiber. That means, if we want to produce yarn with very coarse fiber. So, that means, the fiber due to its torsional rigidity and high bending rigidity that will not actually follow the helix of the yarn. Okay. Now, let us see what happened if we use the coarser fiber. So, if we use the coarser fiber what happened? Suppose, this is yarn we want to twist. Okay. Now, if we use the finer fiber, finer fiber when we apply twist that will follow the helix and also it will follow the migration behavior whatever may be during the twisting. But, if we want to twist the coarser fiber, coarser fiber due to its high torsional rigidity it will not be twisted easily. So, that it will not follow the helix also that this fiber will come out from the structure surface structure. So, that will result hairiness. Okay. So, that means, for coarser fiber from coarser fiber it is very difficult to twist. So, for, twi for spinning staple fiber spinning we have to go for the finer fiber. Okay. So, twisting is a problem thus it is easier to twist finer fiber than coarser one in yarn spinning. So, so therefore, it, if it is a given option two fibers are there that is of keeping all other parameters same the fiber with lower diameter we must always select for spinning because the spinability of that uh, fiber with lower diameter is much better than the coarser fiber. The light reflectance, light reflectance also changes with the diameter of fiber. For a given yarn count and fabric weight finer fiber give fibers give greater number of reflecting surface because it is a finer the fiber higher is the specific surface area. So, more reflecting surface will be there in case of finer fiber thus finer fiber tend to yield a soft sheen it will give a soft glitter soft brightness it will give soft sheen, but coarser fiber will give harsh glitter because from a particular surface it will reflect it will start reflecting. So, harsh glitter, glitter it will give other things being equal also using finer fiber the light reflectance characteristics can be changed because. So, you if we use finer fiber we can produce same characteristics of yarn by imparting less amount of twist. So, if we see this is uh, one this is coarse fiber okay. due to this other characteristics like your higher sur more surface area more contact area. Okay. So, higher strength availability using finer fiber we can impart we can impart less amount of twist to have same quality of yarn, but if we want to get the same strength or same other characteristics for coarser fiber we have to impart higher quantity of higher amount of twist. So, this fibers fiber uh, arrangement for in the yarn for finer fiber it is more or less parallel to the axis close to parallel to the axis at less quantity of less amount of twist we can impart. So, that that means, this fibers fiber surface the yarn surface is ref, can reflect better in case of finer fiber because of the less amount of twist less helix. So, this that means, the yarn made of the finer fiber will be lustrous will actually will have better look, but 
if we uh, impart higher twist that means, the yarn will be little bit dull in nature. So, that is why it is uh, when we use the finer fiber, we always use less twist and it also helps not only in uh, the look, it also helps in the productivity. So, if we impart, if we get the same characteristics by imparting the less amount of twist in ring frame, that means, it the productivity delivery rate is higher. Okay. Front roller delivery speed will be higher for keeping the same spindle speed. So, in dyeing the dyed fabric finer fibers give lighter set than coarser fiber, because it is a depth of that uh, the amount of dye uptake is higher in case of coarser fiber. Okay. So, that in that way if uh, depending on our requirement of depth of set we may select the finer fiber or coarser fiber. So, if we need a depth higher depth, so we can go for little bit coarser fiber. So, that is why it is very important to uh, measure the length of fiber diameter absorption of liquid. Okay. Finer fibers have relatively more surface area than coarse fiber for given mass. So, it is a specific surface area is more than the coarser fiber that is why the finer fiber absorbs more liquid it is it is a higher quantity of liquid and it absorbs faster. So, that is why it is dye uptake is high wicking is very fast that is why the fabric where we high wickability is required we use finer fiber it is wickability is high and it depends on the fiber fineness, fiber to fiber cohesion. The surface contact area as I have already mentioned area of finer fiber is greater in yarn. So, that that is why it results stronger yarn. So, twist results in friction between fibers and this is greater for finer fiber than coarser fiber. So, that increase in friction <coughs> by increasing twist is, is effect is more in case of finer fiber than coarser fiber. And other thus other things being equal for a given yarn count less twist is needed for finer fibers than coarser fiber that we have discussed and this less twist will result better look, better luster better uniformity, less hairiness and that your better wickability okay, that even, even it will give the equivalent strength okay. and evenness of yarn. So, yarn evenness increases with the decrease in fiber, fiber diameter because number of fibers in the cross section is more when for a same yarn count when we use finer fiber. So, for a given yarn count more fibers in the cross section better is the uniformity that we know. Thus, other things being equal fine fibers give better uniformity than coarse fibers. So, coarse fiber if we see it is a it, it gives less uniformity and so if we see the limit irregularity, limit irregularity of the of yarn is expressed by V r is the limiting irregularity square that is the irregularity standard deviation square or C v square of that yarn is the 100 square divided by n. Okay. So, n is the in denominator and V m square by n. So, V m is the irregularity of individual fiber, mass irregularity of individual fiber. So, in the yarn if we see that the irregularity of the yarn decreases with number of fiber. So, as the number of fiber in that means, number of fiber we can increase for a same yarn count by reducing the diameter of fiber. So, measurement of fiber fineness cannot be done by measuring the diameter. So, in other 
engineering material, if we want to measure the fineness for normal say uh, iron rod or say anything, any if we want to know the even wear. So, metallic wear if we want to measure the um, fineness, it is expressed in terms of diameter, because that diameter is measurement of diameter of any wear. Okay. It is a metallic wear, it is possible by measuring the, because it is a uniform in nature throughout the length the diameter is almost uniform okay and most of the cases the it's a circular in nature the rod or the wear they are circular in nature that's why the by expressing the diameter we can measure the fineness but main problem with textile fibers are this is we can measure by diameter so but in textile material we cannot measure because the problem is that cross section of most of the fibers are not circular. So, we do not get the circular fiber except very few like synthetic fiber it is ok, but synthetic fiber again we will see although the if at all the spinner rate is uh, circular, but sometime we find that due to various thermo mechanical characters thermo mechanical action the circularity gets distorted. And also there are many other fibers many other man made fibers their cross sections are not circular in nature like triloval or different type of special structure. So, these are not circular and most of the natural fibers they are not at all circular except wool, wool has got little bit circular in cross section. So, that is why diameter measurement of fiber it is not normally we can we do and also the fibers diameter is very very small it is very difficult to measure the diameter. So, it is in micron. So, measurement of diameter directly it is sometime it creates problem. Okay. So, that is why we do not measure the in general we measure the diameter of fiber as a parameter for fineness. So, cross section are not circular and second problem is that variation in diameter along the length is very high. So, where to explain where to express the fiber diameter. So, if we see the fiber cross section is not uniform, okay. we cannot express, we cannot take the diameter, which diameter should we take. So, that is not the thickness, we it is non uniform. Another problem is that along the length fibers, the diameters are not uniform, majority of the natural fiber they grow like this. So, diameter expressing the diameter it is very difficult okay, because it is very highly variable particularly for natural fiber. And third problem is that the cross sectional shape of fibers within a sample may not be uniform. So, if we see the cross section of say cotton fiber. So, this is a cotton fiber if we see a particular lot we will see fiber with different cross sectional shape. So, there is no uniformity in the cross section. So, different cross sectional shape. So, due to all these three problems we normally do not take fiber diameter as a measure of fineness. Okay. Now, first problem was the cross section of most of the fibers are not circular. Let us see the cross section of normally known fibers. Okay. This is cotton, it is like bean type structure cross section. So, we cannot measure the diameter here okay. and also it is a it uh, it is a very it varies from place to place. Okay. Silk, 
it is not circular, it is a trilobal type or triangular type shape cross section. Flax, it is little bit hexagonal type shape. So, we we do not have any circular cross section. Okay. Wool, although wool is little bit on in the circular, that is why only in case of wool we express the fineness in terms of diameter. Wool only is the fiber where we express the fineness in terms of micron. Okay. That is why it is a circular in nature, but still the diameter variation of wool is very high. It is may be 25 percent, 25 percent to 30 percent diameter variation, but still we can measure the diameter of wool fiber. See this is synthetic fiber, acetate fiber, it is not circular. Rayon serrated structure, so we cannot measure the diameter and trilobal polyester, although circular polyesters are there we can measure, but main problem as I have mentioned it is a very fine di diameter. So, measurement is difficult. Okay. Next is that variation in diameter along the length. So, along the length if we see for particularly for natural fiber diameter varies. So, it is not good idea to measure the diameter. Okay. So, this is the way. So, at different portion this is a cotton at different portion if we see the thickness changes. So, we cannot measure the diameter of the fiber. Wool, it is a different structure okay, at different, but here although the in case of wool we take try to take the mean diameter in terms of micron, but if we see that nat for natural fiber the diameters are not uniform. The cross sectional shape of fibers within a sample may not be uniform. If we see this is the cotton fiber, the cross sectional shape of cotton fiber or different cotton fibers are totally different, there is no uniformity. So, we do not normally do not measure the diameter here. So, the most convenient way of expressing the fiber fineness is by measuring the mass of known length that is linear density. So, linear our idea is to measure the cross sectional area of fiber. So, if we see the mass per unit area, unit length, sorry, mass per unit area length or linear density, it is proportional to the cross sectional shape. Let us see how. This is one fiber for our convenience, we have taken the cylindrical fiber, cylindrical shape. Okay and volume is the cross sectional shape, cross sectional area by length. So, mass equal to volume multiplied by density and that is the cross sectional area multiplied by length, it is the volume and it is a density. So, mass per unit length m by l mass by unit length when for keeping the density constant for a particular fiber density remains constant. So, we can say mass per unit length is proportional to the cross sectional area. Okay. This is the cross sectional area. So, that means, so it is justified that if we measure the mass per unit length whether it is a circular or not does not matter the mass per unit length is always proportional to the cross sectional area. Okay. So, that mass per unit length gives the idea about the cross sectional area for a same fiber. That means, the fiber with higher mass per unit length will have higher cross sectional area. So, how to express the fiber fineness? We can express the fiber fineness in terms of text. Okay, that is in direct system, it is a text, it is a mass in gram of 1000 meter of yarn or fiber. Okay. So, most of the fiber fineness are expressed in the direct system, it is a mass per unit length we need to measure. So, Desitex it is a 
desi tex is a uh, tex is normally used for yarn and desi tex normally we use for fiber it is a smaller in unit that means mass in gram per 10000 10, meter 10000 meter of fiber so that is the desi tex denier is the mass in gram of 9000 meter so 9 kilometer fiber will have that mass suppose desi tex is x so if we take the 9 there is a denier is x if we take 9 kilometer of yarn the mass will be the say x gram okay but at uh, this takes desi tex or denier they are normally used for synthetic fiber say man made fibers and for cotton there is another uh, system it is called micronier. Micronier is expressed in terms of it is a ma mass in microgram per 1 inch for 1 inch of uh, fiber what is the, the if we take the mass that will be micronier okay. and we can convert micronier to denier, denier to takes their conversion is simple. That means, micro by measuring the micronier of cotton we can actually measure the cross sectional area. Now, desi tex we can calculate directly using this formula and where rho is the density of fiber in gram per cc and d is the diameter in microgram. So, if we can if we know the desi tex and density of fiber we can calculate the diameter or vice versa and this is for circular fiber assuming the fiber is circular in nature, but desi tex is actually proportional to the square of diameter. So, let us see what will be the desi tex of a polyester fiber of diameter 12 micron. So, diameter is given it is a 12 micron diameter is given. So, we would like to know the desi tex or denier. So, by using this formula directly we can measure the desi tex. Okay. The density of polyester is 1.38 gram per cc diameter is given it is in 12 micron. So, desi tex will be this formula using this here diameter is in micron okay. directly we use. So, this is the desi tex of fiber. So, directly we can measure. So, this type of problem we can actually solve by directly by using the formula. Now, we have to now select there are various methods of measurement we have to select which methods are to be is to be actually adopted. Okay. The, the what are the methods we have to adopt. Okay. So, this methods depend on the various factors first is the physical form of fiber, okay. whether it is a raw fiber in bale form in the form of sliver or if it is from the roving or from the yarn or even from the fabric. So, if we want to measure the fiber diameter or fiber fineness from fabric, so we not, will not be able to get a large quantity of fiber. On the other hand if we have large quantity of fiber we have to we can use a particular method okay. and if you have very few fibers we can use different methods and also the there are methods we, which we can get directly and another method we can get indirectly the fiber uh, cross sectional area. It is necessary to assess. So, is it necessary to assess the fineness of individual fiber from the bulk. So, do we want to measure the fineness of individual fiber or is it necessary to assess overall fineness of a batch of fiber in the bulk. So, if we want to know the overall fineness we have to adopt different method. If we want to measure the fiber fineness of individual fiber then we have to adopt different method. So, methods depending on these factors. 
first is that gravimetric method of measuring the fiber fineness. Okay. It is basically it is by taking the mass of fiber. From the comb shutter diagram, fiber tufts are taken at a spacing of 1 centimeter tuft. Okay. Selected are sliced out with the help of razor. Now, let us see. This is comb shutter diagram. From here, we are measuring, we are taking out the fiber. This is few fiber we are taking, and after say 1 centimeter distance, up this is the 1 centimeter distance, we are taking another set of fiber. Okay. And these fibers we are whatever number of fibers we are taking from this. After 1 centimeter another set we are trying to take. Okay. Now, this segment of fibers we are when we have talk taken. So, this is the segment these are the fibers we have taken taken out and then we are slicing the edge to make it uniform okay. to make it uniform. So, this is the actual fiber day. From here also we are taking a this fibers and then again cutting it okay. and here also it is smaller one and we are cutting it. From here also we are taking smaller fiber and then we are cutting it. Okay. Now, from different portions we have taken and then what we are doing and it is a sliced out with the help of razor then 100 fibers are counted and weighed on a sensitive micro balance okay. at different places we are taking. So, we know the length of individual fiber and such 100 fibers we are counting and then we are taking the mass. So, we want to measure the uh, actually mass per unit length. So, we know the length individual 100 fibers we know, we know the individual fibers length and then we can measure the mass. Why are we taking from the different zone? Because the longer fiber for cotton the longer fiber will have higher diameter always the longer fiber it is a mature fiber that is why normally it is a natural fiber it is a little, little bit higher diameter and short fiber is little bit immature fiber or not fully grown. So, that this fibers will be normally it is a lower in diameter to make it average out to average out. So, we, de, we take the fibers from different source different position. So, short fiber and long fiber also and then we are getting the mean fiber linear density okay, and convert it to mass per unit length. Next is that same method gravimetric method for wool fiber. This is little bit different where wool has almost circular in cross section. So, we have we know the wool fiber it is a circular is cross section. So, we can measure either mass per unit length or measure the diameter. So, after completing the fiber length test the fibers are collected and thoroughly cleaned of oil because during fiber length test when we take, take the fiber from the comb bar or from the cutting, so it contains oil. So, oil content if it is there, so it will affect the diameter of fiber. So, that is why we have to clean the fiber and then dry and we have to allow it to condition. Okay. So, after conditioning then we take we have to take the weight in the micro balance. Okay. Now, the total length 
is some, uh, sigma h n okay that means is calculated knowing the number of fibers in each group and then the fiber mass per unit area uh, unit length is derived now this is suppose it is for wool fiber wool fiber length so we what we do we take from different length group so this is one length group this is another length group okay so the length group range should be around say 3 millimeter so around say 3 millimeter range length group fibers are mass per unit area so this length groups are there here this is another length group here we have another length group so in this this length group the length group here the length is say h okay h length okay h1 is the length and here number of fibers is n1 this length is say h2 and here lambda number of fibers is n2 here it's a h3 a number of fibers n3 so in this way we can take n number of five groups so here in this length group what is the total fiber length n1 into h1 is the total fiber length in this group what is the fiber length n2 into h2 n3 into h3 and so on so if we add all this thing all these groups so n h this shows the total length of fiber total length of fiber and if we take the mass of all these groups then it will be the the mass if it is mass is w then it will be mass per unit length okay that's the fineness of fiber now we can see then gravimetric method of wool the total mass of all uh, mass of fibers of all classes it is a milligram and h is the class length in centimeter that particular class we want to take and n is the number of fiber in particular that particular class each class okay so in that way we can calculate the mass per unit length now here mass per unit length is of the unit milligram per centimeter milligram per centimeter is the unit here okay mass per unit length now as wool is circular in cross section as we have mentioned this wool fiber this we can get we can convert this mass per unit length into diameter of fiber this diameter is known as gravimetric diameter so there are two types of diameters one is direct diameter of wool fiber another way is that gravimetric diameter if we know the mass per unit length of fiber then we can convert it to gravimetric diameter here w unit is milligram and length unit is centimeter now let us see how to convert how do we get this uh, constant 97190 Now, if we see this is the fiber okay, total fiber length and the cross section is the pi d square by 4 okay. d is in micron we want to know in micron okay, length total length what is the total length h n is the total length of the fiber then cross section area 
and length that is this this gives the volume of the fiber this is giving the volume of the fiber if we multiply by the density we will get the mass of the fiber mass in say milligram okay and now here it's given the dense it's as per this uh, formula we have seen this unit is that micron square because diameter in micron length unit was in centimeter density unit was in gram per cc and mass unit was in milligram this was the unit given now what we are trying we are trying to get the this constant now density is 1.31 density of wool is 1.31 gram per cc okay now if we see here the if we try to convert in terms of say centimeters so this if we convert pi d square by 4 d square into 10 to the power minus 4 that means centimeter square it is that is 10 to the power 5 minus 4 means it is a and it will come into square that is it is a in a from micron to centimeter square micron square to centimeter square we have converted. So, it is becoming centimeter square unit. Okay now it is centimeter unit so this is this remains same this is centimeter unit okay that means centimeter cube and this unit is gram per cc rho remains same okay and this is this that means total unit here it's becoming gram so we have to convert it in terms of gram w by 1000 that means w by 1000 this unit becomes gram okay now if we see the d square d square this d square we are just rearranging this d square becomes w by this one this will go to other side chain now let us see the constants this constants are this is 10 to the power minus 3 Okay, and this becomes 4 and here this is the gram per cc will go to other side 1.31 and this pi will go here and this will be 10 to the power minus 8 this this will go in other side. So, if we see this value total value of this this will come out to be w by chain into 97190 approximately this value this is the value we are getting it is 97190 that is why uh, this is in micron d so d grab is equal to under root 97190 approximately to w by chain. this is the way we get this constant value so 97190 so that is the gravimetric diameter of wool is this okay uh, under root 97190 multiplied by w under root this uh, sigma h n so this is the total length of fiber so, assuming wool is a circular in cross section and the density of wool here is 1.31. So, this is the way we are getting this constant. Okay. Next method is that by microscopic method. Microscopic method we only use when the fiber diameter is circular, the cross section of fiber is circular. 
it is applicable to the fiber with circular cross section ok. A suitable random and representative sample is conditioned for 24 hours in standard testing atmosphere. So, for any fiber diameter measurement it is very important to, to condition because if we do not condition because phi most of the fibers are hygroscopic in nature and by absorbing moisture the it gets swelled. So, we will get totally wrong result if we do not get the fibers conditioned ok. So, for same fiber with different atmospheric condition different humidity level the age diameter changes. So, the for measuring diameter we have to first condition properly. Then fibers are cut into suitable small length because we will measure the diameter in the under the microscope very small length we have to cut and the slide is prepared by carefully mixing the fiber into a mount. Some mounting material should be there some mounting chemical has to be there one the care uh, utmost care has to be taken for selecting in mount is that that it should not swell the fiber that is very important ok. Fiber should not get swelled. So, the mount is important because it has to actually place that keep the fiber in stack in the in its position when it is placed in the on the slide. The mounting agent should be non swelling and have suitable refractive index ok. Normally, liquid paraffin is used. Now, why refractive index? Refractive index is here it is extremely important because if we use the uh, refractive index of mounting agent which is equal to the fiber then problem would be that the fiber will not be visible, fiber will be actually optically dissolute, optically it will be it will be totally vanished, we will not be able to see. So, that fiber refractive index it should not match with the refractive index of the mounting agent. So, otherwise we will not be able to see this, this technique we use when we measure the fiber cross section and by optically dissolving the fiber few fibers we can see the other fibers. The mixing of fiber and mounting agent is spread thinly. So, there should be the mixing properly mixing and it should be thinly spread on the slide covered with the covering glass. So, it should be uniformly distributed it should not be clustered. The slide is then traversed in zigzag fashion. So, that we can take the fiber diameter from different position different portion and we can cover maximum number of fibers ok. It should be in the zigzag fashion to cover all fibers randomly. This is the way the fiber the slides are moved ok. This way the slides will be moved. So, that we take the reading from different portion. So, majority of the fibers are actually covered ok. Now, we will continue with this measurement techniques of fiber in the next class till then thank you.